Hi, and welcome to the Food, Wine, Pets Travel Podcast. This week, we ask the string family, who does the cooking while on the road? Joel can cook, like, pasta. He can put pasta in boiling water. Anyone can cook <laughs> pasta. <laughs> and he can make really no, good pretty, fires. He's pretty good at cooking rice as well. <laughs> and Paranella Park, always good. Just got better. I think it's it's a bit of a it's sort of like a dream. It's a bit of a fantasy kind of place, and when you walk in, it, it just feels surreal. And where do your pets sleep? What they don't sleep on the bed with you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people might like that, which yeah. which some that's small fine. White coffees, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hi, and thanks for taking the time to listen to the Food, Wine, Pets, Travel podcast. I'm Brian Pickering. And I'm Kay Brown. And we would also like to welcome... My name's Sarah. I'm the mother of the string family. That makes me the boss. I'm on the violin. Here we go. There's a little bit of a music intro there. <laughs> Sarah from the string family. G'day. Hello, Sarah. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Hi Kay, how are you? Good. She was listening. She was listening to her own playing there, her own music. Maybe you didn't didn't, didn't hear it loud enough. Well, welcome to Food Wine Pets Travel. Now, do we call you Sarah or do we, do we call you Sarah? Well, um, I like to be known as the boss. Really, that's my preferred title. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, this week, we, we thank you for being our special guest this week, and we're going to have an update on your latest gig in North Queensland at Paranella Park. Most people would know that um, your lovely husband, Joel, had a very bad accident recently. Just briefly, how's he going? He's going really well. It's a bit more of a, a mental sort of recovery more than a physical one. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but <laughs> just more sort of tiredness and um, slower thinking and a bit more frustration and things like that. He's walking still a little bit affected, but not much, and his speech is returning to normal. So I think he's he's definitely on the improve, and we hope that he'll be back playing with us soon. He's picked up the cello once, but so far, you know, it's just getting through day-to-day is, is about the best we can do. So just briefly for those that um, didn't hear about the accident, um, Joel damaged his, his skull, didn't he, when he uh, had a fall? He did, yeah. He had a fall. He slipped on some rocks and Lant took the full impact on his head and he fractured his skull in a couple of places and re- that resulted in bleeding in the brain and um, a clot and also an air pocket in the brain. So it's something that we've never even really thought about before, this type of injury. So we've been really learning and quite surprised by what actually it means and the type of recovery that happens. Mm. Well, it's really good that there's lots of specialists nowadays that uh, are very au fait with this type of injury. So I'm sure that he is getting the best of care. And of course, he's getting great care from you and your two wonderful children, Heath and Ashley. Definitely. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> good. And, and music also soothes the soul. So hopefully uh, he's been listening to a lot of the tracks that uh, you guys have been recording. All right, we're, very shortly we're going to find out about Paranella Park, but you guys have been on the road now for, what, two and a half years or something, three years? Yeah, we were on the road for three years, that's right. We just settled down up at Mina Creek, which is a tiny little town just not far away from Innisfail, about 20 minutes from Innisfail. This is where Paranella Park is. So right. we just moved a couple of weeks ago and settled into this house. It's been pretty good getting back into a house. I have well, to actually, say. That, that must be interesting getting back into a house because I was going to ask you, we wanted to talk about, you know, preparing food on the road and doing all that sort of stuff. So you've had that experience. What's the difference between a house and a caravan? There are cupboards to put everything in and <laughs> <laughs> you can buy the you can buy the bulk bag of rice um, and huge bags of potatoes. When you're on the road, you've got to buy small everything. So that can be a little bit more pricey. I mean, it depends. It depends how much weight you've got to be able to tow and how big your cupboards are. But being a family of four, we didn't have a lot of space and a lot of extra weight. So we had to buy, you know, just a small thing. So it's really nice being able to 
get a bit more value now being back in the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we come to visit, I'll have to do a Costco run before I uh, before we get up there, so that I can bring you big everything. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Now, you were telling us earlier that you're not, you know, the world's best cook. I mean, um, could have fooled uh, me. Yeah, exactly. But I also happen to know that you're a pescatarian. What is a pescatarian? A pescatarian is a vegetarian who eats seafood, so um, fish, oysters, prawns, anything really. So not not a strict vegetarian. Wow, yum. You got me because I love all those. (laughs) And how did you manage that when you're on the road and, uh, you know, not with a lot of space? Even though we are pescatarians, we don't eat fish that much. So it's mainly it's mainly just legumes and fruit and vegetables and grains and, and things like that. One thing that was interesting was that some country towns that we went to hadn't really heard of vegetarian options. So you'd go to look for their tofu or something and they just give you a blank stare like, what's tofu? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, things like lentils and... Yeah, I guess lentils were, were are a very good thing to have in the cupboard because they they actually fill you up a lot. They're really cheap. They're really easy to cook, especially the split red lentils. And, um, yeah, I, I guess we, we lived off lentils a fair bit. I remember hearing that um, in India you could have a different dal made from lentils every single day for a year and you won't duplicate any recipe. So did you have a go-to recipe? Yeah, I mean, dal was one of Ashley's favourite recipes to cook and and she did that quite a lot. But mine was basically lentil soup. But if it wasn't hot, if it's hot in the caravan and you're cooking a soup, it's a terrible idea because it just makes it even hotter and, you, and and I just don't recommend it at all. But in cooler weather... Lentil soup is really delicious and so so filling and really good for you. <laughs> now I have to ask: four people in a caravan. Was was there any sort of gas uh, situation that arose? <laughs> Sorry, any sort of gas? Yes, did you say? she's being rude. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> just checking. I heard correctly. Um, <laughs> being cheeky. <laughs> Yeah, no, no. I think once your body's used to that sort of food, you don't tend to get gassy. People, a lot of people associate lentils with gas, but if your body's used to it, you don't get gas. Okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm working on Brian, and and we're doing sort of half lentil and and half other yeah. things. So but I like yeah, the, I like the it. idea of of the fish. I mean, I love all those things. Mm. Prawns, oysters. You like everything. I, I actually do like everything, unfortunately. <laughs> Look at me now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's the beauty of travel is that every place you go to has their own sort of um, specialty. So at the moment um, at Innisfail, everybody eats Spanish mackerel because that's the local fish that's yeah. caught here. So it's really nice and interesting to eat the local seafoods wherever you go. And if you're coastal, you just get the best seafood. Mm, that's okay. something we're looking forward to. Mm. Yeah, mm, in Karua, if you if you're going by a Karua on your way up north, make sure you try their oysters. They're absolutely beautiful. Oh, well, I think we can manage well, that. Well, Karua, if that's north of Newcastle, right? Yeah, it's not far. Yeah, that's right. You've got a cousin in Karua who used to grow mushrooms. That's right. So yes, we're big mushrooms. The, the edible ones, not, not, Yum. not the funny ones. Yeah, the edible ones. Yeah. All righty. Well, look, we can all learn a lot from just, I guess, doing right, getting out there. And it sounds like the kids have all been helping cooking. What about Joel? Did he ever help cook? Joel can cook like pasta. He can put pasta in boiling water. Anyone can cook <laughs> pasta, <laughs> and he can make really no, good pretty, fires. He's pretty good at cooking rice as well. <laughs> Okay. Um. <laughs> I'm going to have to learn some yeah. new tricks because I'm used to cooking in the microwave, the, yep. the rice and stuff like that. So, Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, um, we had a set of saucepans that they were really, really light aluminium saucepans and they stacked inside each other. So within one big pot, all the other pots and the steaming basket and the strainer and everything were all within that. So that's the only space that was taken up in the cupboard. And then when you take them all all apart, you've got heaps of different yeah. saucepans. So I recommend that sort of thing. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? It's, it's the compromise of uh, like just getting ready for us to get on the road full time. The last few days I've been culling uh, kitchen drawers, much to the disgust of Kay. <laughs> and um, uh, it's like, why do we need 18 coffee cups? There's only two of us, you know? Yeah, exactly. And it's amazing how little you actually... I mean, 
you don't need most of the stuff you have in your kitchen, but as soon as you get rid, rid of something, the next day you'll, you'll need it. So well, a zester? I can't bring my zester? <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, look, there, there's some basics, the very, very basics, and uh, we'll hopefully be bringing some more. So hang in there. We're going to uh, take a quick break, and then we're going to find all about Paranella. Thanks, guys. 